Uh, Glenn, let me just start with you and what happened in that court today with uh, Judge Chutkin. Uh, it, it got heated at times. There were times when Judge Chutkin said to the defense, to the Trump team, uh, you're simply not getting the two-year extension that you're hoping for. And in the end, they got two months. Yeah, Ali, it did get heated at times, but the heat was coming from just one side of the courtroom. That was from the defense counsel's table. Uh, John Lauro, the lead defense attorney for Donald Trump, started loud, and he only got louder. And twice, Judge Chutkin asked him to please take the temperature down. He was arguing passionately about why he contended he needed two and a half to three years to prepare the case for trial. Now, I will say Judge Chutkin opened with... Um, neither of the two trial dates that have been proposed, January, this coming January 2nd by the prosecution, or April 2026, proposed by the defense, neither are appropriate. So I was sort of expecting maybe a Solomonic splitting of the difference. Um, but here's how it sort of played out. She gave the defense team several opportunities to come up with a more realistic proposed trial date. And John Lauro stubbornly refused to budge even one month or one day. And by the end of the hearing, and I think she had a pretty good sense coming into the hearing what she was thinking, by the end of the hearing, she said, well, Mr. Lauro, your idea and my idea of how much time is necessary to prepare a trial are very, very different. And I'm setting jury selection to begin in this case on March 4th, 2024. So that is about seven months or so from now. She believes that gives Donald Trump's defense team enough time to adequately prepare for trial. Mary, there are now distinctions, or people who look at the various indictments and wonder how they're all the same. There's a, a good distinction here to be made between this particular case and the Mar-a-Lago documents case, in which with Mar-a-Lago, it's a whole lot of top secret classified documents. They need to go special places to review them. Judge Chutkin kind of made the point to Lauro today that that's not what this case is. There's a whole lot of uh, information that you'll have that you already know about. Uh, it, it doesn't actually require the prep time that Lauro thinks it does. That doesn't mean every case doesn't. They might have had a better argument if this were a different case. But she said, based on the evidence that we understand now, this is enough time. That's right. And remember, Judge Chutkin was herself a defense attorney and who tried cases, in fact, tried cases against uh, Glenn, I'm sure, and myself uh, back in the day. Um, and so she knows what it takes to prepare a case for trial. And you're right. The difference between this and Mar-a-Lago is, is very significant because every single one of those classified documents that is charged in that, in that indictment, some 31 classified documents, um, the defense has to be able to look at those. They have to be able to make arguments about whether the government did or did not closely hold those uh, documents. In other words, keep them from being made public. And so that means they will want to look at other classified information. They can only do that in a SCIF, um, a, a sensitive compartmented uh, information facility. They can't take them to their offices. They have to go through a whole series of very specialized hearings under the Classified Information Procedures Act. None of that, with one small caveat, is at issue with the January 6th related case. Now, the government did give notice that there are a small number of classified documents that they feel like they have to turn over to Mr. Trump as part of the January 6th related case, but it is a small number, and they think that they can be handled very readily and is not something that is going to require the same number of protracted hearings as the Mar-a-Lago case. And as you indicated, this is also a case where, you know, yes, there may be some details that are new in the indictment, some documents, perhaps, that Mr. Trump and his attorneys haven't seen. But much of this story has been told before. It's been told in the press. It's been told in the House Select Committee's uh, report. And it's been told in, of course, the indictment in itself. And the government was ready. And I believe their prosecutors today represented it. They had either finished or almost completely finished turning over discovery. So even though it's voluminous, it's not the kind of thing that defense attorneys or even the prosecutor needs to lay eyes on every single document or digital piece of evidence. They can use machine uh, searches with keywords, et cetera, to, to get this through. So I think she was being realistic. And uh, I think this case is definitely going to go to trial before the election.
Uh, so that's the answer that we need from somebody like you, who's a real expert, who can distinguish between the kinds of documents that need preparation and, and, and secrecy and time to review. And then there's this. Um, the, the former Trump attorney, Alina Haba, was on Fox News yesterday making an argument that doesn't sound like it was in line with what, uh, what Trump's attorney in court was saying yesterday, yesterday. But here's what she said about this case. How do you logistically handle, you know, prepping a client for all of those different trials and running for president of the United States? Yeah, if it was a normal person, honestly, Shannon, I could understand the concern. President Trump is not your average person. He's incredibly intelligent and he knows the ropes. He also knows the facts because he lived them. These are these are not complicated facts. Look at Fanny. It was a phone call, a phone call that's been around forever that he refers to as the perfect phone call. What is he going to have to be prepped for? The truth? You don't have to prep much when you've done nothing wrong. So that I'm not concerned with. Uh, Basil was chuckling, so you're getting the response on that one. But you don't have to he knows the facts. He knows the truth. He, what's there to prep for? Why, why, why wait till March? Why not just have this case next week? Well, that's exactly right. And you're right. I was chuckling. That's funny. Um, y y we could have it next week. And the reality is that, as Glenn was reporting earlier, all of that bravado, all of that noise, all of that passion, um, that's what they're used to mm -hmm. doing. They're bullies, right? We've known that. We've seen that. That's what they're used to doing. And, and, and what's amazing about what's happening as we see this play out is that this is this is. This is sort of the big boy table, right? Right. These are these are judges and lawyers that do not do not play around. Right. I was going to use another word, but I won't. They do they do not mm -hmm. play around. And as you know, as we get closer, and I imagine that Trump's uh, team is going to try to do everything in their power to move this thing again and again and again. It's a very um, tricky day that the judge has chosen. If you're in the Trump camp, because it's right. right before Super, Super Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Um, he certainly does not want to have that happen. But the reality is he has we are now at a point where every trick that he has used that he's used to using is just not going to work for right. him. Charlie, though, here's the interesting thing. Basil points out it's, it's the day before Super Tuesday. But if, if you're Donald Trump and you've been looking at this very, very busy week that you've just had the mm -hmm. last seven days, let's call it Wednesday, which was possibly your most threatening day, the day of the Republican mm -hmm. debate that you weren't part of and you left a lane and an opportunity open for someone else didn't really materialize into much. I'm not I'm not sure that any of this affects Donald Trump's political calendar all that much because he just plays as if it's not bothering him and his, his supporters don't seem to be too, too troubled by it either. Well, let's be honest, none of us know exactly what is going to happen, but but you make a great point. Um, the, the, the date is interesting because it is uh, right at the, the cusp of when I think he hopes that he's going to wrap up the Republican nomination. I mean, it is certainly possible that he will wrap up the nomination during this trial, while this trial is going on. And I, I think you saw last Wednesday, you know, how deeply enthralled the Republican Party is uh, to Donald Trump when six of his eight challengers, people running against him for president, said they would still support him if he was a convicted felon. But uh, we're going to have many, many, many days like this over the next year and a half. Um, and, uh, you know, where, where he, his, his lawyers are going to go into court, as Basil says, and they're going to try the, the usual Trumpian tactics uh, in an environment where that doesn't, that doesn't sail. I mean, his, his lawyers are doing exactly what he is telling them to do. And Donald Trump is maybe riding high in the Republican Party, but he is really the client from hell. And you can see that in the performance of his lawyers over the last few days. So let's think about that. Glenn, you were in that court. Uh, it, it's, it's the first of many times we're going to see Tanya Chutkin and uh, somebody who most people don't know, except you do. Um, and, and you're going to see her interacting. How'd that look? Because she made the point that she doesn't want this politicized and she doesn't want politics to play a role. But she did have to get into it a little bit with Donald Trump's lawyer. Tell me what we need to know about Tanya Chutkin based on what we saw today. Yeah, she is smart. She is fair. She is stern. I think she will be demanding. I think once she sets a trial date and she will set a briefing schedule in the run up to that trial date, I think she's going to stick with that. I don't think she's going to let defense requests to push deadlines down the road or to have a trial date slide. Uh, I don't think she will endorse that. I don't think she will allow that as my friend and former colleague Mary said, 
You know, I tried murder cases against Tanya Chutkin right across the street in Superior Court. She actually referred today to the fact that she has prepared cases as a defense attorney, murder cases, and she understands um, the responsibility that a defense attorney has to make sure they understand all of the evidence that has been over, been handed over in discovery. But she was confident that Donald Trump's team of defense lawyers can do that in the next seven months. So, um, I, you know, I've said it before, um, when you watch Tanya Chutkin preside over any criminal case, I've watched her preside over some of the J6 cases, you know, she doesn't play. She's, she's polite, but she is stern. Um, and I don't think the defense attorneys should try her patient, patience or her resolve, particularly when she made a point of saying, you know what, Donald Trump is entitled to a fair and speedy trial, but so are the American people. They're right. entitled to a speedy trial. They're entitled to have this uh, resolved well in advance of the election. So this is how we're going to proceed.